Hello, in this video I will be showing you how to set up MeshBaker LOD. So my previous video was a demonstration of how it worked. This is a demonstration of how it's set up. So setting up uh, MeshBaker LOD is a multi-step process. Uh, there's basically four steps. First we group the objects and bake them into combined materials. Then we add an LOD manager, we create LOD prefabs, and then we add cameras. LOD camera components to your camera. So once that's been done, it's set up and it'll work. So what's this first step? Uh, grouping objects and baking combined materials. This can be done in a separate scene. So um, I've got two scenes here. I've got my game scene and I've got a setup scene. Um, create, now I'm in the setup scene and so I've dragged in my model. So there's a model of the oak tree which has three levels of detail. So I modeled these in Blender, and these are just the raw imports. And then there's this house that has also been modeled in Blender, and it has some levels of detail. It also has a cup, a door, um, some stairs, and a table. That's all for the interior of the highest level of detail. And then there's these uh, meshes at different levels of detail. So that's the highest and they progressively drop to a very simple mesh. Um, so I want to set these up so they use um, the LOD. So basically here's a list of my models. Oh, so the for, for first step is I have to group these into things that are combinable together. So when we combine things into combined meshes you can only put one material on that combined mesh. So obviously the windows need to be transparent and the houses need to be uh, needed bump to diffuse material so obviously those combined meshes cannot uh, be the or those objects cannot be baked into the same combined mesh because then when we apply a material it has to either be a transparent one or a solid one so um, uh, those have to be baked into different combined meshes. So we have to sort of organize these groups. And things to consider when grouping what can be combined are the shader that's being used by the meshes, ma the material, uh, the render type, whether it's a mesh render or a skin mesh render, because usually you usually want those baked into different combined meshes. How close objects are, there's no point in combining meshes that are uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of units apart. Uh, whether there's tiling involved on meshes, because that, um, if you're going to use atlases, which Mesh Baker does, and there's more than one texture in the atlas, then tiling has to be considered. Uh, light mapping, um, objects that use different light map indexes, uh, basically can't be in the same combined mesh. And whether objects are static or dynamic. So in this scene, we've got house models, tables, uh, and these are the shaders. They use static, diffuse, static, diffuse. The doors are diffuse, but they're dynamic. They move. Windows are transparent. The glass goblets are transparent. The trees are transparent, and the ground is transparent. Or sorry, the trees are static, diffuse, and the ground is static, diffuse, but it's also tiled. So a good way to group these would be this. So we're going to group the house, the table, the trees, and the stairs should be in there too. I keep forgetting this. Stairs. Diffuse. Static. Yeah. Right, good enough. Um, and then there's the doors, the windows, the glass goblets. So that's how I'm going to organize my scene. Um, I'm not even going to LOD the ground because uh, there's no point in baking um, an object that has one mesh in it into a combined mesh, but I'm going to end up with three, three groups. Now, if you're wondering if you have a very complex scene, a good way to get information on what's in it is you can create a mesh baker object. Uh, mesh and material baker and then you can open this tools for adding objects list shaders in scene and if you go to your console um, you will have you can copy this and paste it into a spreadsheet 
and basically it lists all the objects in your scene, what shader and material they use, whether they're static, uh, whether there's problems with the mesh that'll make baking difficult, like overlapping sub meshes, out of bounds UVs, what the light map index is, and stuff. So this um, will help you the number of materials on the object. So this will help you plan um, how you're going to group the objects in your scene. Okay, so we've decided on what the groupings are going to be. So next, and people who have used MeshMaker before will understand this stage, we're essentially going to combine or create um, material bake result assets. So there's these material bake result assets that MeshMaker creates, which basically um, has information on which materials are in uh, the combined um, or which materials it's a, it's a mapping of um, source materials to where those textures all those materials are in atlases and once that's been done then um, anything any mesh with those source materials on it can be baked into a combined material so what we've got to do is create that mapping okay so how do we do that we create mesh baker objects and um, add these source objects to those mesh paper objects and then tell mesh baker to bake the textures on those so um, we had three groupings so we're going to need three mesh baker objects to do that so that's we've created one let's duplicate it two more times I uh, will call one house and trees I'll we'll call the next one um, what was uh, doors and we'll call the next one windows okay and then with each of these so let's start with the doors we just add the game objects that we want to be bakeable by that um, mesh baker and I'm the mesh baker has two components on it, a texture baker and the mesh baker and we're working with the texture baker right now so I just uh, drag the door object in and then create empty assets for combined material so I'm opening that and I'm gonna, I've got this folder for storing the combined materials a neat trick when you're developing if you're always hunting for folders and there's ones you use all the time if you just put underscores at the beginning of the file name then they bump to the top of the list so they're easy to get to so we'll call the combined material doors save and then I just have to bake that bake materials into combined material and um, so this is creating an atlas for the doors so it can take you know a minute or so to do this baking of atlases so once the doors are done we'll do um, the house and then the windows so one thing I'd like to mention about mesh baker LOD is um, it doesn't actually bake all con constantly like it doesn't bake every frame it only bakes on an ad need ad on an as needed basis basically the LOD objects themselves keep track of when they need to change uh, their LOD and when they do they notify an object in the scene called the LOD manager and uh, the LOD manager basically groups those uh, changes into batches so it's extremely efficient it usually only bakes a few times a second not every frame um, okay so that's done so now we can do the oh so let's look at what that did in the combined materials folder it created this combined material asset which has a list of materials and the UV rectangle that those materials map to and you could actually, if you have your own atlas externally generated, you could edit this file yourself to uh, to do that. And it creates the combined material, and then there's the atlas, but there's only one texture in the atlas, so it's a bit of a silly atlas. Um, but it's needed by MeshBaker. So. Okay, so now we're going to do the house and trees. So we're going to need three objects. 
Now, um, we want to be able to combine all the houses, but we only need, they all use the same material already, so we actually only need one example of an object that uses that material in the list. And then we'll be able to include the others because they use the same material. The stairs use that material too, and the, uh, the trees. So we have to include one example of the tree, create assets for empty materials. We'll call this house and tree. Save and then bake those. Okay, so that's baking. Um, another nice trick that Mesh Baker does is um, it distributes the baking across several frames. So uh, there's a, a setting that you can limit how uh, long Mesh Baker will bake for per frame. And um, if it exceeds that value, then it defers the rest of the baking to the next frame. So that helps avoid stuttering, even in very, very complex, busy scenes. So now we do the windows. So we're going to add the cups and the windows. So we come down here, add the cup, add the window, and bake those. Um, what did, oh, I didn't create empty assets. Uh, window. Save. Okay, so I've got my assets. I can bake this. Okay, so now we've got, uh, is that done? Let's have a look. Window. And you can click on these to have a look at how the, um, the baking turned out, and it looked like it turned out okay. So there's the atlas for the house, and it's got the tree beside it. And the table should be in there too. Uh, did we forget to add the table to that? Let's have a look. House and trees. Stairs, you're right, I forgot the table. So four. Let's add the table. Table. Okay, so this is going to combine. Um, so what this has done, this mesh baker object is capable of combining any mesh that has any of these materials on it. So uh, Tudor House 2 Oak, and in a moment it'll have table in there too. Okay, so we're almost done. There. Okay. So, there we are. We've created um, these mesh bakers and we've got these assets. Uh, they're basically the result of that process is these assets, which uh, the, these assets are going to be used to map these meshes in the level of detail to the correct combined mesh. And we're going to do that in the next video. So I'm going to stop this here.